Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for attempt number two of part number three of Day 9 Daily number 477, where ordinarily we learn to be a better gamer, but it's Monday, so we do whatever we please. Yes! Now, in, uh, of course, one of the things that I brought up at the part number two end was how you know when you've lost when you're interested in a girl. Now, by lost, I mean lost her. I mean you will not get the chance to be with her anymore. And I know that many of you have had this experience where you, I, I would almost describe it as like, as the, the, the sequence where the, the, the they're, they're trying to like get close to the planet so the guy can jump up and grab on to the, the ladder, the rope ladder that falls down, hangs onto it, it carries him away. But then it's not quite close enough and he missed, right? That's what it feels like. It's like, no, I just need to reach a little farther to grab onto the rope ladder and then I could be with her. Here's the thing. Are you ready? This is how you know. This is how you know when you're doomed. Are you ready? This is how you know when you're doomed. When you try to explain yourself. That's when you're fucked. Oh my god. Oh my god, is that a mistake to ever do ever under any circumstance. You're at that lunch table, you're having those fun times, saying those jokes, then you say something and she's like, hey, that's not funny. It maybe upsets her, maybe it's a joke about a baby penguin, and she goes to a baby penguin shelter to heal them and make them feel happy and wonderful, and you just made a baby penguin joke. That's unacceptable. So what do you do? You try to be cool at the time, but you know what happens? Maybe a day passes. And you feel terrible. Oh no! It, well, actually, it's more like a few hours. It's more like forty-five minutes. Like after lunch, you immediately message her on Skype and you say, "Hey, I don't want you to think that I'm not someone who wouldn't hate penguins. I don't want. I like penguins. Okay. I just didn't want you to. Th the instant you've done that, you're dead. Right? You're done. Your freaking life is over. Life is just gonna take the biggest nosedive ever because once you explain yourself. Then you immediately want to say something like, and I don't want you to think that I'm someone who gets really upset if people don't get my jokes, right? You start explaining why you just explained it, and this, this chain happens where actually you don't want her to think anything. You also just want her to shut up and sit there, apparently, because this is how you come up. I just don't want you to think that I'm the sort of person who wouldn't be sensitive to someone who's in that sort of situation that they didn't want to be in. I don't want you to think that. So then what you learn as you get older and older is that if it happens, then pfft, whatever. Honest truth, let me stop day nine joke mode for a minute. Even if you botch something terribly, that's only one time out of the hundreds of times you're going to interact. And if she really gets that torn up over the one time, or if you're a girl, if he gets torn up over the one time, fuck him, right? Back to joke mode. But what you learn, what you learn to do you learn to just go with it, no matter what it is. If you say some horrible joke about baby penguins, she gets offended, you're just like, yeah, that's right, that's what I think about baby penguins. You run with that, right? That's who you are, that's your identity. It doesn't even matter if you, you could love them, but now to her, you have to hate them. You can't, you can't break that. See a baby penguin on the street, you have to beat the baby penguin with a stick. You don't even bring a stick normally. Now you gotta start carrying a stick around. She asks why you have the stick there. It's to hit baby penguins because I hate them, right? It's, it's a terrible dilemma to be in when someone misperceives you so violently, but you just can't explain yourself, man. Got to be cool. You got to let it go, or you got to embrace your new identity. I don't know. Maybe you do like hating on penguins, right? Seriously, never explain yourself. Never explain yourself, because then you always sound crazy. Always. Because here's the honest truth. 99.99% of the time, it never occurred to her that something was wrong. It just didn't occur to her. Never once popped into her head that a bad thing actually happened. And then you measure, hey, I wanted to talk. Can we talk? And she's like, why? The way that people, be when you start a sentence like that, it means that something's terribly wrong and I don't know what's wrong. It's about, it's about baby penguins. And I'm sorry. Do you realize how many times I've done this and flubbed hard? Oh, he's so sweet. And gross. Ew. I won't date him. Damn you, Felicity. Damn you! Dawn of the Penguins. Everyone's talking about penguins. Great. 
And Kiro Carp says, I don't really know what Day Nine's talking about. Did he offend someone with a joke about baby penguins? Or is that the joke? <laughs> go on, Sean. Go on. Go on. It's good. And yeah, there weren't that many great entries that week. That's why we're doing story time. Here's a good one. It's from Spock. The ever so great neck grabber. Down in the bottom left. And Sugar Boy. There's Sugar Boy. Spock says bronze. Sugar Boy says yep. And we say yes. Look at this. Tight. Still newbie. Me too. But Spock, that glorious bastard, he's going to be stepping right out the gate with a little bit of mind control. That's how he is going to lay it down. All right. So Sugar Boy's going to start out with a fairly unusual gas into one guy in gas into barracks opening. And we're actually going to times eight this because we have the good old hatch gas gas cancel gas into spawn and pool into spawn and pool. Going ahead and making the double spine crawler. Now I'll just state right off the bat: this game just starts off kind of dry, right? Starts off just a little dry, just a little dry. And we see Sugar Boy just sort of racking up his units. We see the double starport going down. And one thing I love about StarCraft II as a game is that even at this low level of play, where they're both bronze, they both admit to being not veterans of the game by any means, but they're just going to start themselves off with a good old sparring match that will turn into something fairly interesting. Now, I'll be honest, when I originally heard this topic proposed, I was kind of like, sure, why not? Let's give it a shot, right? I was going to go on break for three weeks. This seemed like a good topic to do during then because you would have three full weeks to give this build a chance. And that means you could have three weeks of total, utter, miserable failure before submitting a game. So we get to this point in the match. And we see Spock, he's expanding. And I remember when I was watching this game, I was like, oh gosh, it's going to be the Druthers. There's the pathogen glands going down. The Zerg player, he's starting to rack up a lot of cash. He's going to begin expanding quite soon. Yep, there's the expand over there. There's the expand over there. Terran has only just gotten his natural expansion up. It's five base versus three. Oh no. And a lot of this is due to the fact that our Zerg player, Spock, is going for this neural parasite rush he's like rushing for it he's going for it as fast as possible he has like no units actually come to the unit station he has three zerglings he's just going straight for it what do i do with the money i don't know expand why not excellent and we see sugar boy with his mass viking medevac production supply blocked all to hell we see the mass lines of spines, another mass line of spines, a fully operational fourth base. We even see Burrow going down to be oh so useful with the infestors. Assimilation successful. Oh, I heard assimilation successful. There it is. Oh, it didn't work. <laughs> there it is. Oh, he gets the worker. What is he going to do? No, he's going to load up into the Overlord and he's going to die. Because the Funday Monday requests tend to lead, or lead to league demotions. And then, with our 48 Zerglings and our 7 Infestors, our opponent just drops a freaking army into our base. <laughs> we get totally destroyed. <laughs> oh no. Oh crap. Bring the Infestors back. Bring them back. Fungal. Fun oh, I didn't pay. Now, oh no, he has medevacs and shields everything. Ugh. Oh, it's so brutal. And suddenly we're not feeling good. That's a fine. We're going to make 11 infestors. 11, because at the very least, we want to make sure that we satisfy the Monday Monday theme for the day. That is our goal. Sugar boy. Looking pretty good. Now we see all the infestors stockpiling up, and he remembers his goal, his duty in life. He needs to neural parasite an SCV. 
His opponent is only mining on one base thus far. One base at a time. A nice nab on the fungals means that Spot does have more attempts than one to get the Fun Day Monday theme going. Bainley Nest number whatever millionth going down right now. There's another one going down. So good. Here it comes. Get him. Got him. Assimilation successful. Here he goes. And yeah, build a command center quickly. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, crap. This didn't... You have to... You have to keep them neural parasited. Run! Run, Burrow! <laughs> Burrow, quickly! Alright, so I mean, he... <laughs> I mean, he sees it. He sees it right there. Wow. Okay. Well, in the meantime, we're worried about dying, so we have to go ahead and build some infestors. We gotta take that out. In a second. Yeah, so good. All right. All right, coming back. Coming back. Justin Bieber coming up. Justin Bieber? Why did I say Justin Bieber? I meant to say Neural Parasite. Justin Bieber coming up. Did you just hear that? I was reading the chat about Justin Bieber. Yeah, I said it. But man, did that just sound weird for any of the archive viewers who can't see the chat right now. I just think I'm weird. Well, let me assure you, let me, let me just assure you that I'm not weird. Didn't I just do it? There we go. Wasn't that easy? Freudian slip? Is that, would Freud argue that I'm just so obsessed with Justin Bieber that while watching StarCraft 2, I just said it? That's fine. Justin Bieber is a talented musical artist, and I listen to him. What do you think about that, chat? That's right, they hate me. <laughs> you see that? You don't explain yourself. You don't say, oh, I was thinking about it. You don't. You just go, yeah, I said it. I love Justin Bieber. I have a shrine for him. And you know what I burn on it? Incense. So when I walk into my house, odor fills my nose. And I think, Justin Bieber. And I'm glad that I've created that artificial psychological conditioning for myself so that I can think about him more. When I have a cold, I get upset that I don't have the Justin Bieber odor in my nose. I'm not weird. All right. All right, come on, Spock, I believe in you. You're my favorite Star Wars character. He's so naughty. All right, he's creating the lateral train. He's creating the lateral train. All right, get him out of there. Do you believe? I believe. Meanwhile, back home, we have <laughs> we have 13,000 minerals, 1400 gas, and kind of some bases. And and assimilation success. Get him. Got him. All right, hot potato. Burrow. Oh, dead potato. And build it back here where he won't see it. That is until he runs out of neural parasite, and then he'll just see the command center there. Quickly, quickly, tell him to build. There it is. Meanwhile, we're dying really rapidly, but we have a half-done command center and a worker that has not yet returned home. Quickly! Quickly, team! Quickly! Get it there. Get it there. Yeah. Build! Build! There it is. We got a few seconds on it. And... Build, build, build. Build him. Yeah. We're losing everything. Things are just not going well back home. It's okay, we're re-expanding to these other locations. We're re-expanding. Build. Build, come on. Come on. We got 16.6k in the bank. We have 16.6 thousand in the bank. I'm almost a little worried we're going to run out of energy, but no. We have far too many investors for that. All 
Alright. Yes! Time to start Funday Monday! Yeah! Yes! Got him! Excellent! Alright, let's walk this ring to Mordor. There it goes. Spock getting ready to move up to the north where there's an army there waiting for him. Well, let's not go there. Let's head a little bit to the left here. There we go. Let's get those infestors in between us and our brand new race. There it is going down. There it is. Oh! Oh my god! Oh! Oh! The opponent just... Oh! It's so abandoned right at the good part. Really? Really, that's when you decided to stop, Spock? That's when you decided to stop? Taught him a lesson. He'll never drop there again. <laughs> He'll never drop there again. He's at red health. Did my job. Did my job. Mm-hmm. Remember you on Skype talking to that girl you've had a crush on for ten months? Remember that conversation where a guy rejected her and you were there to emotionally reassure her for like four hours when she was done you thought to yourself totally digs me I did a good thing tonight yeah it's a lot like this it's a lot like that that's what that's like got him got him Get him, got him, good! And there it is, trying to defend as best as he can. Landing those Vikings! And we got a base. Yes. Yes! Spock doesn't explain himself. Spock simply does. He's no Sean Plot from ages 0 to 22. He just does as he pleases. Looks like we have some command centers mining. And what's the first thing we build? An engineering bay and more command centers. Why not? Yeah, there it is. There it is. Missile turrets en masse. I'm loving it. Yeah. Yeah, we're safe up here. Look at Sugar Boy with the death squad. Finding bases, taking them out one at a time. He's got 50 APM, he knows how to use it. Here he is, the move out. Oh no, Marines retreat! Oh, it didn't pan out. Another command center into a planetary fortress. Oh no, it didn't pan out. And there, alas, alack, Spock. Goes ahead and builds a bunch of marines. Looks like Spock ain't Zerg anymore in the unit counting station. We see that the only Zerg remnants for Spock are 12 overlords and one infester. <laughs> the planetary fortress! Oh, it saves the day! Sugar boy! Sugar boy! Oh no! His expansion is gone! He's had to lift it to move it to yet another base. And as it turns out, Spock, who once upon a time was a Zerg player, his transformation is complete. He took those Terran hormones until he finally sprouted a human body. Now it looks like Spock, continuing the tradition of when behind hide bases all over the place. <laughs> it's just, I can't wait for that post in the strategy forums on Team Liquid. In a Zerg vs. Terran... When I open up in Fester Ling, transition to Ultras, when's a good point to transition to becoming Terran? <laughs> well, when you arrive in the late, late game and your opponent has taken no bases in any way. <laughs> and he's moving out, he has Stim, he, he neglected to get Combat Shield, I don't know if he knows it exists, I know he plays Zerg, but Spock moving on in. With Marines... There it is. Wow. Right? Right? 
And, alright everyone, let's practice our StarCraft 2 strats. Let's practice our StarCraft 2 strats. If you're Sugar Boy and you lose, what do you say? What do you say? You say, fucking Marines are imbalanced. <laughs> right? Right? Isn't that the right thing to say as Sugar Boy? God. I had him own, and then he got the ability to build marines, and I lost. Fuck, marines are such bullshit. Oh, God. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> well, that's it for Funday Monday. I'll see you next week. I'm going to the NASL Grand Finals tonight, or er, Thursday night. Tonight, what I'd love for you to do is go to kingofweb.com, and in second place, there is a lovely lass by the name of Rosanna Panzino. Vote for her, because if she wins, then Husky Starcraft and I will reenact a scene from Sex in the City dressed up as characters from Sex in the City. That's right. I kid you not. Go vote for her. You can vote 10 times a day, so that means that with 15,000 of you, we can get 15,000 times 10 votes, which means we can get her 150,000 votes right now. I want her to win. That's how we do it. So if you'd be so kind as to do that, I'd be delighted. Fun Day Monday for next week is going to be a repeat of my favorite topic. Honestly, I've just always wanted to do this one twice because it was probably one of my favorite Fun Day Mondays ever. Submit to me a game of... The closest StarCraft II game ever. We're talking games where you end with under 20 food. Like, really, really close. Really close. Submit those to Monday at Day9.tv. I'll see you tomorrow, midday, for the Team Liquid Star League 4 qualifier cast that I'll be doing with Husky. And, of course, for tomorrow's Tuesday Daily. See you then. Thanks so much for walking, ho watching. Hope you had fun. You guys are awesome, etc.